New Justice League trailer coming this Sunday. Jeff Johns and Diane Nelson clear some things up. And Superman's coming back in a black costume? Today on DC Movie News. Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk, we talk movies. And now, here's Popcorn Talk's DC Movie News. In the great hall of the Justice League, there are assembled the world's four greatest heroes, created from the cosmic legends of the universe. Yes! The legends of the universe have assembled all here once again, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, no Mikey Christmas or Johnny LaCroix, though, today. They're away on other business. But joining us once again, back from the dead in his all-black costume, mullet and beard, is Paul Ponte. Hello. <laughs> Welcome back, sir. And yeah, you were wearing the black costume as promised. I got the Black Justice League shirt. I heard there's a little clip coming out Sunday. I heard there's a clip too. I'm Hi-yo. so bummed that I won't. I'm, I'm going to be seeing Blade Runner 2049 tonight. And I was really hoping that it was going to start with a Justice League trailer. But uh, I get it. I get it. It's not exactly the same. But I mean, it's it would have been such a big weekend for it. But oh well. They're Comic Con, I guess. It's what it Possibly. is. Possibly. So, do you know anything about New York Comic Con? Like, is there actually, uh, uh, like, a, a Warner Brothers panel, or is it just going to like descend upon wherever they're like having their thing? Like, how does it exactly work? I don't know, but my brother will be there, so I will have to get the the DL from him. I'll make sure he calls in and explains it all to us. I've never been to New York Comic Con. I've never been to New York Comic Con either, but it seems to be growing more and more every year uh, and getting more popular. Popular. Um, so, how you guys been? What's going on? Introduce me. Oh, sorry. Paul Ponte is here. Did I mention <laughs> that, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, no, as many of you have quoted, the crown jewel of this whole shit is <laughs> Roxy Stryer. Here she is. She's Roxy Stryer. I spit hot fire. You spit what? Hot fire. She spits Dylon, hot fire. Dylon, 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 and Dylon. That's great. Uh-huh. Relevant. Excellent. Totally relevant. Hey, everybody. (laughs) My name is Adam Gertler. Happy to be in the captain's chair today. Uh, Wearing my Appetite for Justice shirt. Just a few weeks away. We're just like a little bit over a month. Wild. Mm. It seems like we've been talking about this movie for years. And I still... And we kind of (laughs) have. I mean, I know this is going to change in the next couple of weeks because more and more people are going to see this movie. And unfortunately, the way things are today, you can sort of start to... Uh, get a feel for things before they come out. It's just impossible. Start gauging what the reaction is going to be. But Paul, right now, we haven't talked to you in a while. Where are your hopes? Where are your expectations? What do you think about Justice League uh, and that that you're going to see? I'm I'm hoping that after Wonder Woman and how great it was, I'm hoping that all the the stuff about, oh, there's reshoots, there's Joss Whedon, there's all... I'm really optimistic for a few reasons. Uh, one, this we're going to talk about it a little later. Uh, maybe the term of not having everything build up into everything else in, in mm-hmm, all the other movies. Mm-hmm. I like I that. I called it. I called it. <laughs> um, and I'm I'm really optimistic. I love I love the trailer so far. I think the final trailer is going to give us a better feel of what this final version of the film is going to be like. I mean, I don't buy that they say that there's not a lot of changes because there probably is. I know. But there's that's not that. necessarily a bad thing. Uh, we can also, uh, Anthony, in the booth, we can start taking a look at some of these new posters, actually, that were put out this week. The posters have been great, and I will say the internet reaction from a lot of the posters, um, are these the all-in ones right there? We got Batman right there. Let me ask you a question. Yes? How often do you feel like a poster Flash. determines the quality of a film? Oh, never. Liter- literally 0% of the time. Um, so it know, is so funny how excited yeah. we all get, because I'm one of them, too. I'm like, oh, my Ooh. God, these are the best posters. It's true. <laughs> but it's like, we just need a different why. pose. Just need yeah. a different all pose, the- and we're, ha- we're excited. Strike a pose. Oh, there's Aqua. Aqua Lad. I liked Wonder. Looking good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's Wonder. She looks great. I like the all-in thing. Flashy. Flash is cool too. Yeah, Aqua's cool. Which one? What else? What else we got? Oh, we got Cyborg right there. Hmm. Um, still don't know what to expect from Cyborg. Me neither. Like, really no hoping, clue. Really hoping the effects have improved since like that first trailer. I think the second trailer looked better. You had that one. That's the old school one that we've been looking mm-hmm. at. Do you have that last one that I, I sent you? That newer one. Oh, look at that! Oh, surprise! 
Oop, there it is. A little yeah. Green Lantern in there. Yeah. That but, was, that's some fan work right there. Yeah, that, but, that's, a, that's a work of Adam Gertler on his iPhone. Yeah, exactly. That's that's one of my little talents there. But um, <laughs> so, do you think uh, think you're gonna get some Green Lantern in this? Yeah. Oh, you're not asking me. No, I'm asking. Generally. Yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Now, do I think that it will either be Hal or Guy uh, or John or anybody that people would be expecting to see? No, I don't. Yeah. Um, but I do think references. Kind of like what we get sometimes on the TV shows, or maybe a split second, see something, somebody's come, somebody from the core, something like that. I'm thinking good chance that Steppenwolf is turned into the intergalactic police custody of one of the lanterns, <laughs> potentially. And they take him off world. Some people show up, a bunch of rings, like lock in, like he, his, his forces fight the league to a standstill, they For just kind of win. What percentage of the film? Oh, definitely third act. Okay. I think Soups, we'll into that. Soups is back somewhere in the second act. Allegedly. Allegedly? <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. Oh, uh, oh allegedly that Soups <laughs> yeah. is back. Uh, do you think it's going to be a bad Soups in the black costume? I don't... I'm not sure what they're going to... What they're going to do with Superman when he comes back. I I mean, the, the idea that we get that image of Alfred apparently talking to him, and he's not like... Oh no, what are you doing? What uh, took you so long? Yeah, I don't see Superman being evil. Right. He might be a bit confused as one would would be after coming back from the dead. I think the big uh, you know, the big curveball in all this is that we don't know I mean, that seems like if he came back and was evil and they excised that from the film, that does seem like a huge change they would have made. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, that would be too much of a change to just wrap up at the end there. I feel like you would have had to gear it up to that and then fall, follow through with that. What is uh, what is the chat role saying? What, what are their feelings? They liked your theory. This? Hugh says, Adam, good theory on that. Um, Intergalactic um, arrest after. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. Um, Ninja Ned says, bad Superman black costume. Yeah. Um, hmm. Westy says, more Alfred. He's a good character. Again, not totally relevant, but I guess a pro- not fair. <laughs> I guess a prevailing theory is Lois is the key, Superman's back. Do you think they're still gonna go with that, or are they gonna throw that out? <sighs> That's I what I know. I'm very, you know, because. So, do you think that was like an Amy Adams, like he puts her in front of her face and she's like, "No, I'm here," and he's like, uh, "Ah, that's right, I'm a good guy. I forgot." I can't. I can't. You can't even. I can't with that. Oh boy. Yeah, you know, you know us millennials. We literally can't even. So, no. No, on that one, that she she irks me in the films. Right. You know that. We'll right. see. We'll see what her usage is here. She is a Pul- Pulitzer Prize winning. Um. <laughs> God Colin <laughs> Prime, Colin Prime, nice uh, Peter Cullen reference there in his name, said that do, they're doing a twisted version of the original Superman theme in Justice League. We talked about that last week, the Danny Elfman thing. So it seems to me he's going to be bad when he first returns. But Danny Elfman did say you're not really sure. So mm-hmm. if PB, he comes back, yeah. and like they're on the field, and this guy comes back, and he's an X Factor, and Batman has been like inspired by Superman this whole movie talking about Justice League right now and he's like oh shit am I wrong but then he turns out he's good so we don't know that he's ever actually bad, bad. well we know Batman's gonna be upset because he'll be like dude black is like my thing yeah what is this new oh, outfit oh you think they're gonna duke it out over that <laughs> yeah that'll be Batman v Superman 2 dawn of outfit wars that's yeah, what it's gonna sure. be for sure that's why and then he, he so he actually doesn't even come back bad he becomes no. bad <laughs> Um, do you think they're going to show him in the trailer? I'm asking everybody this question. I know everybody's got an opinion. Because th- the fans don't want it. I can say that with some degree. Well, you're talking about the fans as in the super fans. I'm you're not talking, talking about, about the fans as in the general I'm fans. talking about the football fans. Yeah. I'm talking mm. about, and we know this thing is dropping on Sunday. There's a good chance they're going to air this during Sunday night football, too. Like, they will spend the money to, to, to really bump this thing up. And if you do that... Can you have the balls to not show Superman or reference him in that way? Yeah, regardless of what Jeff Johns or any of them want, is it going to be Warner Brothers saying, we need soups on that commercial? We need soups I on actually, the trailer. I don't have as big of a problem with you guys do as seeing him. I know that that's been like the point of discussion and, and the one thing that you and Mikey Christmas agree on consistently. But yeah. I won't have as big of an issue just because it's so already there. It's so out there. Now, do I want them to show him? No, but I do understand for marketing purposes, 
that getting people who are big Superman fans to the theater is important. And if you don't know the movie, say you went and saw this movie, say Superman or uh, the last movie, Superman dies, and you're like, well, Soups was the one that I was here for. I guess I'm not going to watch the next one. Like, I'm sure there is a bunch of people like that who watched him die, and we're like, well, crap. Now well, I'm not coming again. That's true. Well, I want to be preserved. I want to see him for the first time in the theater, and I guess you could tell me, well, then you could just not watch any Justice League trailer and you'll have that experience. <laughs> no, so that. I don't know if that's going to happen, though. I don't have that kind of willpower. Um, let's move on a little bit. I do want to talk about this. We often talk about, I've I've often been really critical of DCEU. Not really anymore. Not really DCEU anymore. DCU. Uh, what are we going to call um, it now? Just the what do we do? DC Films. DC Films. DC Films. That's what there actually is a moniker. I think that's a good label. But basically, Jeff Johns and Diane Nelson, the president, I guess, uh, or CEO of, of DC Entertainment, they kind of had a long interview with Vulture. It came out just after our show last week where they talked about, they sent the record straight about a lot of things. And this is the kind of thing that I wish we had more of from DC. Um, some of the points, some of the big points are that the movies are connected, but not all building up to one story. Hence, No Justice League 2. He references Aquaman as being its own thing mm -hmm. uh, because Wonder Woman was its own story in the world. That seems to be what they're doing. Not so much what we saw in Batman v Superman where it's like, yes, this is Dawn of Justice, but this is what's coming and this is what's coming and all that kind of thing. Yes. Um, so what do, you, what do you guys think of this article and uh, Jeff Johns and Diane Nelson and everybody kind of speaking to some of these great points we'll talk about? Though. Definitely excited that somebody said something. You know, I was happy to hear, like you talked about, Adam, all the time, that we just want a mouthpiece. We want to hear it from a reliable source, and we don't want to just keep filling in the gaps because that's what we do as human beings. So I was happy to hear something, and I think this makes a lot of sense. They're going to focus on the individual films. Uh, I think that's how you make the best film you can, not by having it lead to another film. These are standalones. You should be able to watch them start to finish, feel satisfied with it, and not just have every single character film lead to a Justice League of sorts. So I think that that's awesome. I wasn't surprised by it, though. No. None of us were surprised by it, because if, if we took, and everybody criticizes rumor-mongering, but the fact is... All this information has been out there. There's a lot of misinformation, too. Right. But distilling all the information, none of this is surprising. Paul, what do you think about this? Are you surprised? Uh, I'm not surprised. I'm, I'm happy about it. Well, first, I'm happy, like you said, that they actually brought, came out in Front Street and just said it. Uh, not pieces here and there of, well, this is going to be a little more stand. Well, this one is going to be... Like, they just came out and said, no, this is what's happening. This is the slate. As far as this is our idea of moving forward, it's going to be movies that focus more on themselves and are just sprinkled and connected, which is what I like because I think it gives movies more freedom. Yeah, I think a lot of the problem that they've had with losing the directors and in the early stages trying to get this really interconnected thing going is that these directors were walking away because they weren't giving them that freedom. Mm -hmm. They're like, and, and, and they hadn't earned that at that point. It wasn't like what Kevin Feige was doing over at Marvel, which has almost become um, an incubator for yeah. directors that are right in between there. You know, you're not getting these established auteur directors doing Marvel films, you know. Um, you know, yes, the, the, the Creed director is on the, uh, on the rise, but, like, they're right at the, on the cusp. And that's also, the brand was established first. So you couldn't do the same thing with, like, bringing on these directors, telling them not to be creative as you're developing the brand that people weren't as excited about. And I think a lot of this is the good thing and the bad thing about Warner Brothers in D.C. and that is that Warner Brothers is a movie studio first, and, you know, they were bigger than DC. So up to this point, what they kind of imply is that they haven't really gone to the DC uh, creators for to inform the movies as much. And that was kind of the problem with Green Lantern that, that people kind of infer mm. to in this article. Yeah. Like, um, that they really just were acting as the studio and yeah, not really they, going to the source material. About the Green Lantern part, uh, the quote is, obviously the film was a failure. It comes out and everybody feels depressed and so on and so forth. There's no point in bullshitting about it. So Yeah, like, I think that was actually a quote from Martin Campbell, who is a great director. He, brought, he made James Bond relevant to people that didn't give a crap. And then there was just no, you know, no, no, no direction for, for Green Lantern. We know Ronald Reynolds can, can, um, can lead a film. Yeah, of course, absolutely. And I appreciate that honesty. What about to say this was a failure? Like, yeah, yeah. it was. 
Thank you. Instead exactly. Of, instead of saying like, well, there are things that we enjoyed that we did. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it was for the fans. Yeah. There's <laughs> no need to sugarcoat. What about the idea that he came out? gave credence to the Todd Phillips Joker origin film and mm -hmm. said that, yes, that is probably the first one. And yes, there is a, a side slate of DC films with a label coming soon. He yeah. even said that a label of the, those films will be coming soon. And we actually heard it from the source. Now I think this film is going to happen. Yeah, I, I and before I was thinking Johnny LaQuasto Swerve McSwerve Swerve because you just don't know. Like with the Shazam the, with the Shazam nonsense, even though it was announced, it was just so um what is a better word for um pussyfooted around. <laughs> Um, um, there's nothing better than saying okay, pussyfooting so, around. So they pussyfooted around it. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's not a good one to say on Bob there. Dylan used that uh, term when he accepted the Oscar for love, uh, for uh, 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 the Wonder Boys song. Is that true? Yeah, he did. Thanks, these guys, for not pussyfooting around and let me make the song I want to make. Wow, yeah. So anyway, I said it. Um, but I, So I was glad. I was glad that they just came out and talked about it. Um, he even said in this article that Yes, rumors come out. Some of them are true. Some of them are not true. Um, we want there to be a better way to get the information out there, which I thought was great to hear. And it leads me to believe that, like, again, Warner Brothers, Time Warner, huge company. It's really hard to just, for, like, Jeff Johns and, 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 uh, and even the Warner Brothers studio itself to just be like, all right, you guys give the information. It just seems like there's a lot of politics mm. that's yeah. going on, and it makes it hard for them to comment on deals that are still... In development. Yeah, he said some of the stuff is true, some of it isn't true. When we talk about things, we're making deals for people to develop scripts or whatever. Sometimes things leak, sometimes they're misreported, and it's frustrating because we do want to go out there and talk about what our strategy is, and this stuff just muddies the water. I love that. Yeah, me too. And look at, he's like, the guy's in his 40s, but he's so boyish looking. Like, he, who is a better... Yeah, he does look like a child. He, he's like such a great... Um, champion, and you know, I go back to that thing where, like, he and Kevin Feige were, like, you know, interns at the Donner Company, you know what I mean? Like, that pedigree is really there. Yeah. Um, yes. So, there's that going on, and also, it came out this and week. At least they're, they're aware. Like, it's nice to know that they're self-aware. Yeah. He sees that this is happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, I, again, I think everything moving, moving forward, like, Justice League, big question mark, hope it's awesome, but I'm very confident in Aquaman moving forward. Oh, yeah. Like how things are going to be developing. Uh, because I have so much faith in every person involved in the project. And everything I've seen so far from the James Wan stuff yeah. and even these set pictures, like th that film feels like it's going to be huge. I agree. And, and really, really awesome. And I feel like that film was facing the biggest uphill battle just with its character alone. So the fact exactly. that it's going to be so badass is crazy. And I have nothing, I have no proof of this, but I, I'd like to, I think James Wan is one of the first guys when we heard about the rumors of him leaving the project to draw the line in the sand, whereas we saw the shift from where they were doing this tightly interconnected universe and the filmmakers started walking away. And I think, I feel like Juan is where it happened because he was gone and then he was back. And the same thing with Reeves. And I think Warner Brothers made this conscious decision like, you know what? We'll tangentially connect the films, but if we have these great filmmakers and these great characters, let's let them make the movies. And that's how we're going to differentiate ourselves from other comic book universes by not being so slavishly interconnected. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. So it's all good stuff. And I would like to personally give a mea culpa to Mikey Christmas. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, because he on this show said, who said DCEU? And Roxy and I were both like on Twitter and be like, DCEU is real. It's from Warner Brothers. Yeah. Shut up, Mikey Christmas. Go bake your cookies. And sure enough, there is an article that came out this week, and it turns out... That Entertainment Weekly just... Made it up. There was this one guy. <laughs> and everyone just ran with it. Yeah, yeah. and then he put, he put a cheeky, like, TM in there, too, that he thought was a joke. So it was an article in 2015 from Entertainment Weekly from Keith Staskiewicz. Something like that. I'm sure that's exactly Stas how it's pronounced. Keith Staskiewicz. The more you try, the more you're upsetting well, his, his, uh, his relatives. How did you do a CZ at the end of something? CZ? Staskiewicz. That's Kiewicz. Like Moskowitz or something like that? Wicks. Staskowitz? Wicks. I would say Wicks. I think Wicks. I nailed it on I think the Wicks. first try. <laughs> yep. I think it's on uh, TZ. Sound. So that's where it came from, which is just hysterical that we all just rolled with it and, like, let it be true. Uh, and Mikey was one of the few being like, hey, guys, where... 
where did this come from? You guys are just... It's funny if on both sides, because literally it's the people who like the name who are defending it to the more snarky people. Mm-hmm. Who are like, oh, well, I'm not going to call it that, because... I think it's a stupid name and it's too long and da da da. And it's like, well, they're not calling it either, apparently. So, yeah, <laughs> congratulations. Yeah. You so boycott you like, nothing. You like DC Films? Uh, well, I heard DC Films is the moniker that they currently have. Like, next from DC Films coming up from DC Films. I like that too because. I mean, it's just, it's clean. I don't like DCCU. Yeah, but the problem with DC Films is it's not DC Films. Why not? It's Warner Brother Films. Like,. Oh, uh, Warner Brothers Pictures. Yeah. Warner Brothers Pictures, DC Films. Yeah. So it could be a moniker okay. underneath that. Okay, Warner Brothers right. Prezi- Pre- Warner Brothers Pre- Pictures, Pictures presents, presents DC Films. A DC Films pre- a DC Films based on a novel by Sapphire. <laughs> Push. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Lee Daniels DC Films with Bill saying. Finger. Okay. okay. With Bill Let's Finger. Um, Hugh um, Hoyland says Maggie Christmas will put a lump of coal in Adam and Roxy's stockings this <laughs> year. <laughs> No, so I, listen. Screwed. We I'm need the cookies. Happy to admit I'm wrong. I'll never admit I'm wrong when I'm in an argument. But if if proved wrong, hey, you gotta you gotta say it. And I'm happy because I nobody really loved that term. I don't know. I mean, you were talking about people it. would stick up for it. I don't know anybody who was like this term I, rocks. I just didn't like, mind it. I was like, okay, whatever. Yeah, but, it but, is whatever. But, but doesn't this speak to what we were just talking about about the fact that how did this go on so long and nobody somebody, said anything and nobody even nobody from Warner Brothers can be like, hey guys, just so you know, that's not what we call our universe. Like yeah. that that's weird. They let it go on for a very long time. It's, it's really weird, man. I'm yeah. sorry. I, th- I, I mean I'm, I'm not And like... they're self aware enough to know, so nobody said anything. So yeah. So weird. They probably just laugh at us there like, huh, civilians um, making up their silly nonsense. As we know, the uh, promotion campaign kicked into high gear for Justice League and so we had some great new images yeah. from Empire magazine, including this great one with Affleck. I still look forward to when Empire does this. Yeah. Put that, oh, they're they always the ones... have the best pictures. Yeah, so let's see. We got some pictures here. I guess we'll scroll through some of those. We got some... Uh, some this is Batman with his uh, uh, tactical... What do you think the romantic situation is going to be in this movie? Uh, the sensuality? Yeah. <laughs> huh. Interesting. Like, is there anything between Wonder and Bats? Yeah. Huh. I think it will be a will they, won't they sort of... Um, Cause look how she's looking at it. Screwball kind of thing. Like, I don't think anything will happen with it, but... I think it was some innocent flirting. I, that's what I would like to see. Mm. Yeah, some innocent flirting. I mean, clearly, listen, he's a man. She's a Wonder Woman. What's happening with Catwoman and Bats in the comics right now? Have you guys... Apparently, they yeah. get married. <laughs> Apparently she said yes. Apparently. Guys, is that true? Did she say yes? Do you know this? I don't. I'm, I'm not caught up. I know she it was a cliffhanger. She probably said yes. Chat. She doesn't say yas. <laughs> yes. She does not say yas. You don't know that. You didn't read it. Oh, it would be awful. No. Um, so these images are great. Have we looked at all those? Um, yeah. J.K. Simmons was also talking a lot. Oh, yeah. yeah. We got it. So J.K. Simmons. Oh, I love when he talks. Apparently we've I love already he does seen anything. Like, his whole part of the movie. <laughs> because... Oh, don't say that. And again, another Mia culpa. I sort of, I mean, Mikey shot this down, but I was like on the rooftop where Flash was like, oh, that's rude. I'm like, oh, that's kind of Whedon-esque. But wait, it, wait, on the rooftop on what? When all the Justice League disappear, when Gordon turns yes, around yes. except Flash. But yes. that was Zack, Zack Snyder. That, that scene, was right? Snyder. Yeah, yeah. that was yeah. there. So, yeah, and, and, and he was not involved in the reshoot, reshoots at all. And he's basically likened his uh, performance uh, to be nothing more than a cameo. What interest- Don't blink or you'll miss it. Don't yeah. blink or you'll miss it. he says. What got a lot of attention, too, is when asked about the Batman or solo Batman, he didn't shut it down. He didn't say... I have nothing to do with it. If you could find these quotes, because again, this is where I have to be really picky. Where, you know, I, I, I certainly don't think you can say, "Oh, see, Affleck is going to be Batman." I still don't know. But he seems excited to move forward with the character and work with Ben. That doesn't mean that that's going to happen, though. True, but I see why J.K. Simmons doesn't know if he's going to be in it because they're rewriting the scripts yeah. right now. So it's kind of like, okay, well, if they decide to do a whole thing in Arkham. You know, maybe he's not going to be there. Let me tell you why the actors... Okay, I was just going to say, the reason the actors are the last people to know, and I know this from doing, like, hosting stuff, is because they already have you under contract. If they want to use him, they'll use him. There's no reason to tell him until... Now, granted, he might have scheduling things, and, like, they'll have to deal with that. They might have to pay him if they don't use him a certain amount. But the actors are often the last people to know. And honestly, even if they replace... 
uh, Affleck, you don't have to replace JK. JK because it's still the same universe. A new actor does not necessarily mean new universe. Um, and, and there's still the possibility that the Batman Matt Reeves movie could be side verse. But do you think it would have to be addressed? Like, do you think that if there's a new Batman, we need a story that explains that? Or are you talking about like a Rachel Dawes situation where we just kind of like swap somebody in and out? I don't think they're changing and actors for great Bruce Wayne. example. Great example. You don't think they're changing actors for Bruce Wayne? I don't. There's no way. Because if only because it's someone. It's Ben Affleck. Like, if it was just some random dude, we'd be like, eh, Right, but if it. they did, because I don't think they necessarily are either, but if they do, is it part of the story, or are we just like, shh, this is a new guy uh, with brown hair and white skin? Like, that, you know what? That's what I took the comments from Jeff Johns to kind of mean, like, relax a little bit. Some actors might change, too. It's still kind of all connected. Okay. You know, so it's going to be a Kilmer situation is what you're saying. He just it, shows up and he... Yeah, you have the same yeah. outfit. I love that you both were able to pull a change of <laughs> actors from Batman <laughs> mythology. Yeah, that's great. You know, what about Spartacus, the TV show? No, well, yeah, that's different. That yeah. was very, very sad when that happened, and it was never quite the same without Andy Whitfield. But... Or on Pretty Little Liars. Nope, last year. Obviously. <laughs> no, I, I didn't want to say Pretty Little Liars because it was the most obvious reference. That was reference. the first thing that you were thinking. Yeah, or on like... Friends when they changed Ross's lesbian wife. Or on Bewitch when they changed Darren's. It just happens sometimes. Sometimes All it right, happens. So this was and cool. Affleck, I just read today, was like still working on his personal stuff. I'll, so. I'll, just, I'll just throw out the daughter on, uh, on Roseanne. Yeah, that happened too. Was it a Becky? Be it was a Becky situation. Yeah, and it was Sarah Chalk who ended up going on to Scrubs. Yeah, oh. and, and a million other things. Yes. And I ran into her at Comic Con, and she was very lovely. And who's going to be on the Roseanne reboot, which no one's talking about? Nobody is talking about. It would be it. funny if they did it on the reboot, and each actress shows up for separate scenes. They are they are both in the reboot. They are. Yes, oh, but they have not been talked about what's happening there. So anyway, uh, this is a quote. I worked with Ben a couple of years ago on The Accountant, and I met him years before that. I'm excited to work with him and hope to work with him on the other side of the camera at some point as well. Mm -hmm. and, and someone else just pointed in, no one said a word about the Hulk change. Didn't mess up their continuity. Oh, yeah. He had a whole solo film before. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it could happen. I, look, I don't care. I, I've said this before. I, I like Ben Affleck as Batman just fine. Uh, if he wants to stay, great. And if they move on, as long as they get somebody that's awesome, that's all that matters to me. Cool. Um, George Clooney. Wait. Oh, Paul Ice Ponte. To, nice to meet you. Ice, Ice <laughs> to meet you. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Um, so, speaking of which, uh, we're talking about Superman's return having been spoiled because of a hat. There is some merchandise. Not which... the return of Superman. Superman's return. Do, Superman's <laughs> return. Did they change the description of that hat, by the way, since it first came up? Because now all of a sudden it says, like, based on the comic book story. Oh, does though, it? Even though it's obviously the logo from the movie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so they've kind of covered it up in the... It seems oh, like oh, it. Boy. Oh, boy. It's the weird, worst, best kept secret in the yeah. round. Like, you have Henry Cavill's mustache making news. You have porn stash memes and all this going on. So, that to me is, th that that's why I don't want to see Superman in the trailers because everybody's openly talking about it. They're saying Superman's in the movie. So let's just spread that word and not actually have to show it. Mm -hmm. Just so you can get that real what? Okay, awesome this is moment. What, this is what the update on. So this was from Batman News. And Batman News updated to say, according to a Batman News reader who works for a company that produces officially licensed DC movie merchandise, this description from superhero stuff may not be official. They can write anything they'd like for their product mm. descriptions without approval from Warner Brothers. Okay. That being said, it's, it's the movie. Throwing that merch logo. company <laughs> under <laughs> oh, yeah. under that bus. Yeah. With the JL logo on it and everything else. Affleck sure, has also sure. been um, making comments. He's also been back in the press world talking about the pressures that Justice League faces uh, in a post-Wonder Woman world. And his comments were basically intimating that it's a good thing that people loved Wonder Woman so much because it took some of the pressure off of Justice League. Yeah, that must have made him very happy. Well, nobody but... wanted to see that sad Fleck meme again, no. too. I mean, oh, yeah. I'm no. over it. I'm over it. Over it. Yeah. And, and I'm so, not a big BBS defender, and I still didn't want to see that meme again. Here's what he says. It maybe takes a bit of the pressure off of this movie in terms of needing to define the DC universe. It doesn't feel like the whole world is riding on our shoulders so much. Do you true. also have um, the quote where he talks about the fair criticism lobbied at BVS 
Um, you know, he ta he basically talks about how dark it was and how that was the criticism. And, and I think that's the fair way for him to acknowledge criticism. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that was the problem with BVS. I don't think that was too dark. I think that it was just too self-serious and not good enough for how serious it took itself. That's my opinion. I know you're a fan of the film, right? I like the director's cut a lot. I like it a lot more. But yeah, there's, it was... there's certain things like the bomb being encased in lead, kind of important we for the talked stupid about that. story. That is the biggest face plant head. I mean... None could... of the Africa stuff makes any sense without the director's cut. It's None of it makes sense without the director's cut. It's, Ugh, it's pretty bad. Like I that. agree. So the Martha it... stuff still didn't make effing sense. Exactly. Um, he said, I can understand people saying the film was too dark or this was outside the tone of what I'm used to seeing with a Batman story, and I think that's a fair criticism. Listen... I'll take it. Let's just we we don't need to pick it apart. I'm a, I'm great with this moving forward. Yeah. He says. Furthermore, um, Zack Snyder wanted to make a movie that was more fun, that was a little bit light, that wasn't so encumbered with heavy melodrama. Okay. I mean, and I understand that people say that, and maybe some of that was true. But if you look at the guy's past films, it's not exactly consistent with lightness. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, tw uh, even like 28 Days Later, right? I mean, that's not a really light film. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. I can't remember. I can't really speak to that film no, so much. No, I wouldn't say light. Um, 300, definitely not a picnic. Super light, for sure. Watchmen, Real not so light. much. So light. Sucker All Punch, light. still never saw it. Don't know. No, I didn't see it either, actually. Let's just be happy none of these movies are rated R, because if there's one thing Zack Snyder does terribly, in movies that I love, I love yeah. Watchmen and I love 300, but he makes the most awkward sex scenes in the oh, history yes. of any film. And I'm just glad we didn't need to see eek, these in eek, any of these. Eek. I don't know. I thought the bathtub scene in BVS <laughs> was pretty piss poor awkward. Yeah. It just needed Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, that's right. Oh God, Watchmen. Oh, how do you feel about Watchmen being rebooted at HBO? Love it. Me too. I love the idea. I think it's it fits more to a series than a, than yeah. a movie. Yeah, because I feel like they're going to show a lot with the Minutemen. Mm. Like a lot with the Minutemen in the prime. It could go all over the place. I don't know. Sounds great. Um, let's see. Uh, also, you know, Affleck continued to say that Joss Whedon is not making the Avengers, that he was on Says, board. I didn't sense that we were moving towards something that felt like the Avengers. Joss is more than an Avengers director. He's a good storyteller, full stop, in midstream. Joss got on, and part of what interested him uh, was was the puzzle aspect of it, fitting in pieces that weren't there yet, which is a pretty cool thing to say. But he put the rest of the pieces in and gave it his own... Mm, I don't know how to pronounce this next word. His own... What? His own... Imprimatur? <laughs> uh, his own imprimatur. Yeah, that's not a term I'm very familiar I'm so, with. I'm either. so sorry. Stop me dead in my tracks. I know. <laughs> Joss came in and walked a very fine line between Zach's sensibility, tone, and direction. We found a really fun and inspiring synthesis of these two forms of storytelling. I was so glad everyone showed up to work for Zach. You seriously get the feeling that everybody in Justice League has been very prepared on how to deal with all this stuff in the press. Oh, definitely, like, this was a six-hour seminar. Now, Here is what you can say. Right, and it yeah. wasn't even, I bet it wasn't even so much that, like, Here's what you can say to everyone. Is like, gal, you're a character. You're going to have a little of this to say. Like, yeah. They made it even more unique to the actor yes. so that they didn't sound like they were all saying the exact same thing. But it certainly sounds like they're all being like, oh, no, it's definitely lighter. It's more fun. I don't know what you're yeah. talking about. What do you mean? What do you mean? Yeah, yeah, totally. Also, despite all the Zack haters in, in the world, and there are a lot, uh, you know, we've heard the Hack Snyder nonsense. Well, I don't think anybody at this point is a hater. They might not like his work. No, there's still some haters. But yeah, the people no, are like, the problem, that's, the, that's oh. actually, that's a good point. They should just like, hate his work if they dislike it. Fine by, that's fine. Opinions are opinions. But there are so many people who have like ragged on him as a person for so long. And yet every actor who works with him has nothing but glowing, wonderful things to say about him. The time I met him at Comic-Con, like, 10 years ago he yeah. was amazingly nice and super cordial even though i literally saw him as he was coming out of the bathroom like a weirdo yeah uh, and he was super nice and everyone seems to have such good things to say about him i think people really need to start separating the work yeah. part from who he is it's true it's that's but that's you know i think sometimes that's just what happens when you're that much in the public eye and you have yeah. a really high profile job and listen the guy and, and clearly, he's had a really rough personal year that all the money in the world can't make up for what the guy's right. been through. 
Um, but it is a part of working in the public eye. You really need to be able to shut it down and, and look the other way. I, I remember going to a talk with him at the Apple Store in Santa Monica before The Watchmen came out, and he was so enthusiastic. It was contagious. You know, the guy was really into his work. I just think... He shouldn't have been the guy to be the architect of the DC film universe or whatever that is yes, called. Yes, I agree with that. You know, not to say that he shouldn't have been a director within there. I just think he shouldn't have been the architect. And but. I and I think back to your point, it is such a gray area because yes, I, I think you should be able to separate the person from the work in some situations, but like in others where somebody doesn't believe the Holocaust ever okay, happened. Yeah. Oh, of course. Right. Then, I, I mean, like, I mean, it, so it, it goes one way. Line. It goes one way, but not the other. Yeah. I don't yeah. think their work should impact who they are personally. Their, how they are personally should definitely impact their work. It does. Uh, but yeah, yeah. it but, does. You heard you heard Seinfeld walk it back talking about Cosby yeah. just this week on on on. Uh, on uh, but Zack Snyder just yeah. seems like a dude who legitimately cares about fancy. Like he sounded so bummed when people didn't like Batman v Superman. Yeah, like he and. I saw a, a yeah. preview screening of 300 like weeks before it came out and he was in the audience with yeah. like all the producers and the entire time he's like looking back and looking at people's reactions the yeah. whole time. Oh, so cute. That freaking movie's perfect. I love that movie. I yeah. have nothing but love for that movie and I love how over the top it is and 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 Gerard Butler, man. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I agree with that. Awesome movie. Um, we have some real good info about the Shazam movie mm. from a possible from an actual leaked audition tape. Yeah. Did you guys watch this audition tape? Yeah, damn right. It really... Are we going to check it out? Um, I don't know if we're going to watch it. Do we have that uh, tape? If we can watch some of it, throw it up there. Let's watch a little bit of it. I don't know about the whole thing, but... So this is an actor I recognize. I've actually number seen... 20. I've seen this kid in some stuff. And I I'm curious of what the chat roll thinks. Like, do you think, is it too much like a Spider-Man Homecoming vibe? Because, like, we definitely... Uh, it's, it is a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but too much is the question, Adam, like you mm. said. Uh, so I don't know if the answer to that is yes. Yeah. Is it like that? Yes. Does it matter? Just in the sense that, oh, is that taken down? Is it not available anymore? No, I'm, look I'm looking at it. Okay. Um, so, like, the idea that, like, the DC characters exist oh, in this no, world. Oh, no, I think it might have been... I would think it would have been taken down. Yeah, it might have been taken down. So there was an audition tape with this young actor, and he's... Um, he also, I guess, in the comics continuity or in some of the Captain Marvel continuity was Captain Marvel Jr., mm. a character that was uh, disabled. Uh, yes, Mr. Lebowski is disabled um, at some point. Mm. Nice reference, um, bro. And yeah. he's talking to uh, <laughs> Billy, and Billy Batson was like, didn't you see what I did? Oh, no, no, he is Captain Marvel now. Or he is Shazam at that point. And, like, so he's got this giant body. So... I, I, I don't know. I'm still curious to see who they're going to get to play this. The question this. is, yeah. is this leaked or is this, quote, leaked, unquote? Because they have nothing else to say about this movie, but they want to keep it in the public I think based eye. off of what Jeff Johns was just saying, I think he's sick and tired of things being leaked, period. I mm -hmm. think this was leaked. I don't think I don't this was know. leaked. I think that this all muddy stuff for them. Can you see, did the chat roll see this uh, video? Or did, what do they think of it? What do they think of this Shazam stuff? Um... So large says, "Why are we talking about this?" So that's what <laughs> so large thinks. Oh, uh, Yvonne so Soto nice. says, "Aren't audition tapes usually fake?" What I mean is, aren't they usually dummy sides? Um, oh, oh yeah. Oh, that could definitely be. That could definitely be. Um, Zeno Hour says, "I thought these tapes were debunked or something." Uh, <laughs> debunked or something? I mean, well, if they were debunked or if they were fake, then why are they been taken down? You know, know, if they're red the herrings, fat why? Bob says, "Save Martha." Yeah, I mean, I, you I asked what they were thinking. Okay, I gave um, it to you. Well, if they're real, <laughs> I like the tone personally. I think it was a good place to be. This is most likely the next DC film after Aquaman. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, that's what that is what is being said about when it's going into production. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. But I still think Shazam has been the biggest swerve since day one. We'll see. It's so I, weird. I can't believe this film is getting made. It's finally getting made, and then The Rock is nowhere near it. That's what's yeah. so funny about so it. So bizarre. <laughs> that was the Although oldest his guy. name is all over it, but he is nowhere near it. And Tyrese is extremely angry at him for it. Yeah. Oh, Tyrese is so angry. I was going to tell Tyrese. Oh, he should well, he be wants careful. Green Lantern. He, yeah, but now he's mad at He's, he's getting I mean, very close. That Tyrese is very close to pulling a Sean Young circa Batman Returns. Look it up. Sean Young had a very promising career. I don't know what happened to her. I just saw her in, in the original Blade Runner this week. 
And then she goes Catwoman crazy, shows up in Tim Burton's office. It's a legendary story. Like, Tyrese, slow down. Oh, he's, no. He's the rock. Don't call him out publicly. Mm. You don't need to do that. Mm. Um, we already smell what he's cooking. You do smell what he's cooking. But anyway, there was a little bit of uh, Jared Leto, who is going to be in Blade Runner 2049. Wow. Uh, I guess to impress for that, people asked him more and more about the Suicide Squad stuff. And did he clarify why he is still never seen the film. Yeah, I mean, less of a clarification and more about why he doesn't watch any of his films um, because he also didn't watch, I believe it's uh, Dallas Buyers Club. He said, when he was asked if he ended up ever watching, he said, no, I never did. I just think with watching your own films, it can be too self-conscious of a process. You either like what you did or you're prone to repeat it or you didn't like it and it can make you self-conscious. I'm not sure how much win there is for me, but I read the scripts so I know what's going to happen. Acting. Gotta read those scripts. <laughs> I love that. Like, I already know what's happening at the end of the movie, so why? <laughs> like, but I get that. It is hard to watch yourself. It's hard to listen to yourself. I mean, for me at least. Maybe yeah, no, it ass. is hard. It is hard. I don't like the way sci-fi uh, did the headline, by the way. It seems a little snippy. Because the way it puts it is, it makes it act like nobody saw Suicide Squad, which right. I know is a lie because it made yeah, a bunch of money. Yeah, so he said Jared Leto never saw Suicide Squad, comma, either. Yeah. That, so okay. that sounds like a little, like, side slam right there. Yeah. Even though they're talking about as far as his other films. Yeah. But exactly. I don't know. To me, that just seemed like a little bit of a pot shot out of nowhere. But. Yeah. Zeno Hour, I, I did I not... But I feel like I... I I did not spoil Blade Runner 2049. Sean Young was in the original. That's I, the one I watched this week. <laughs> I do feel like you... Uh, and I'm not saying Jared Leto is disrespecting people, but I feel as if if you work on a project that long and you those are like your friends and everybody's working on it with you, I feel like you should see what everybody else has done. Even if it's hard to watch your own parts, like what about your friends that have performed next to you? What about the art director? What about the music? What about, you know, like all things that people have been working their butt off on? But he's an artist. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of <laughs> like uh, what Martin Campbell said about the Green Lantern thing. Like these productions are huge. They cost over a hundred million plus to make. A lot of people work on them. Nobody likes to get to the end of that day and then see that everyone just dismisses it as shit and a click Unlike you just be like, your movies suck. And you're just like, <sighs> I mean, we just got back making this project yeah. and the artists and the graphics. Yeah. Like, nobody wants to be. And it's not easy to do. So, um, listen, I I like Leto. I would see him again as a Joker. I don't know, you know, when that's going to happen. I'm still confused about, yeah. like, the solo Joker stuff. That he's not involved in whatsoever. That he's not involved yeah. in. So, we'll see where it goes. Yeah, Leto's a great actor. He's he, I like him more than he is as a person <laughs> with that like that that actually made you know that's how good of an actor he is i ignore all the good. other nonsense yeah um we have some news on the anime front it looks like uh Bat batman ninja batman uh, ninja anime arrives in 2018 does it make um, you excited you know this is more up your alley than mine so, I don't know if this gets me excited, because I know that they did a bunch of Marvel anime stuff a couple years ago, and it was not great. Did None you see of, any of that? I, I saw, like, little bits of it. None of the Marvel animated stuff is good. That's true. They just don't it's have a great really animated bad. history. I, I'm excited about this because it's, uh, oh, what is the other thing that the creator did? He did, uh... Uh, 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 uh Cowboy Bebop? No, it says it in the... Oh, movie. Afro Samurai. That's what it is, yes. Afro Samurai, right, which I have seen. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. That makes me more excited for it, to be honest. And hey, any Batman content is good. Batman, con I like, it, it, to me, it's like those old Todd McFarlane variant figures where they'd be like, now here's a ninja spawn. And you're like, yes. okay. Is this the look at it? I know that there was just a look at it released today from Batman Ninja from Comic-Con or something. I don't know if it was a, if it was video or if it was just an image or what. Um, but um, that's something cool. One? Uh, well, that's no, that me. was from a past thing. Uh -oh. That was actually from one they did a couple years ago. Um, let's see. We also have... Oh, gosh. Linda just, Carter? Yeah. Yes. The big old poopy. Oh, She's Lin not her. Just what she did. She took L a big old dump. Linda Carter. <laughs> She's got tired all of... up in arms with James Cameron. <laughs> this is, you want me to read you what yeah, she said? Yeah, tell her what Linda Carter... What the Facebook, original Wonder Woman by said. the way, which is amazing because it's like Twitter just ain't got enough characters for her. <laughs> To James Cameron, stop, discuss, stop dissing Wonder Woman, you poor soul. Perhaps you do not understand the character. I most certainly do. Like all women, we are more than the sum of our parts. 
your thuggish jabs at a brilliant director, Patty Jenkins, are ill-advised. This movie was spot on. Gal Gadot was great. I know Mr. Cameron because I have embodied this character for more than 40 years. So stop it. Hmm. <laughs> she even sounds like Wonder Woman. Yeah. Speak your, thug the heart. your thuggest jabs are not appreciated. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so, so great. Stop it. So stop it. As he embarks on making 17 new Avatar films. Yeah. So many blue people heading to the cinema. I have to jet. All right, you have to jet? Yeah, you got to do TV time without me. Make um, me proud. That seems so weird to do TV time You have to do you. it. Okay. You swear to Sorry, me? Sorry, Roxy's got to go, guys. You swear to me? I will make you proud. It will be the finest TV time possible. Say goodbye, Roxy Stryer. Tell everybody where they can find you. At Roxy Stryer. It's been hot fire. That didn't even mean to rhyme in my head. Don't. Look for her at Roxy Stryer spitting out fire. You won't find her. It's just at Roxy Stryer. Spitting hot fire. She spits hot fire. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's see. We also have some cool set videos from Mirror going against Atlantis Commandos. I don't know if we had video of that. We could see a little bit. There was some cool wire work that you could see. First, it looks like they were marking it out. And then uh, uh, Mira Sicily. Okay, so look at this. Cool stuff. This is out of costume. So this is like a stunt test going on here. Uh, and then we say, all right, that's how that's going to be. So people are assuming it's um, Mira versus Atlantis Commandos. And before you're thinking, bye, Roxy, before you're thinking, uh, what makes you think Mira, go to a little bit later in the video. And then I think we're going to see some big uh, red wig showing up. Oh, look, how much fun does that look, Paul? Oh, I, it looks like such a blast, like just anti-gravity jumping around like you're on the moon. This looks great. So they're marking it out, seeing what, and there we go. There's Mira. So the, if there's any takeaway from this, I guess it's that Mira's going to have, she's going to be an action player yeah. in this film, and which is kind of what we suspected. And we got practical costumes. Yes. Oh, well, you mean like not Zack Snyder, like fake capes and stuff? like. Yeah, or like just like the giant suits, how like the Iron Man thing where they just like, it's his head with like a bunch of blue dots around oh, it. Oh, all the like, different dots, yeah. Yeah, it's like, look, like they're actually in giant suits. Yeah. Oh, that's true. That is a really good point. I, I thought that, yeah, Iron Man actually doesn't look as good as he looked in, like, the no, first he, movie. He has this weird neck bobble thing now because yeah, it's just it's floating. Know. But this, I love the, how much practical stuff is going on here. And look, that's a bunch of rooftops. It's not one blue uh, scaffold that they're running yeah. across and they're just doing everything else. Um, I'm curious what the chat roll thinks about this. Like, where do you think this falls in the timeline? Do you think this is going to be, like, after Justice League or do you think taken out of it i mean like because you wonder are they going to do the thing where like arthur curry's got to like figure out who he is like you got to get that origin story so i i got to assume there's going to be an origin in aquaman because nobody's ever heard the origin story of aquaman and, yeah, and are, even the comics can't agree on one yeah are they going to wonder woman it they're going to go back show you what happened before maybe i mean that would be the easiest way to do it without having to worry about repercussions of Whereas yeah. all the other heroes in this situation, I mean. True, but then there's something about the way that he's perceived in Justice League from the trailer so far where he's just this guy like who's undercover arriving on the king tide mm -hmm. and showing up with fish. Is, is it like all the other times it's just he's chilling in Atlantis? Because I was getting the sort of drifter vibe from that, yeah, that he was yeah. a guy without a home. So I'm really curious. Maybe and that's th why he's, he's a drifter now is because he's already taken care of this issue. And now he's kind of, I'm going to help the people now that I've already helped my people. In Interesting. Um, so Sky Patterson says Aquaman film takes place before and after JLA. That's a good call. There you go. Cut back um, and forth. Movie fights on right now. And just, blah, 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 blah. Before Justice League, they know each other in Justice League. They know each other in Justice League. Who knows each other? Oh, Mira and Aquaman. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is this how they meet? Is this and, Mira and... and we have Jeff Johns comments about you know it uh being like its own film too so not very integrated so a lot of curiosity there um okay well i guess that's all the movie news we'll get to for today and i guess to honor her um we will do a little bit of that thing that happens after we've done all the it's time for Roxy there you go play it loud yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Paul, you're not in this new version of the song, but we'll... We should get, like, a little Paul Ponty insert, kind of like when Batgirl was on the Batman 66 show. Oh, yeah. And, like, you knew the, you saw the thing. 
I used to get really excited when those are the best episodes. Those are the best episodes. Um, Okay, there's a new uh, Legends of Tomorrow poster. Time you break it, you fix it. Um, That's pretty cool. Super excited. I love this show so much. Me too. It's such a good like. the, the, the negative reviews are people who just don't like comic book things because it is the most comic booky out of all the shows. I also think it's it's the story that I most want to come back to because I feel like they there's, the seasons are just a little bit shorter. Mm-hmm. And so the um, it's really wacky and out there. And I'm just getting a little bored with some of the other CW stuff. And mm-hmm. like I'm not as excited and like... Legends is exciting because I know it's going to bring... There'll be like a one-off, awesome, deep-cut DC reference that'll be in there for one episode at some point. And because they can go, you know, all over the place and in space and everything, it it feels like they're willing to go super wacky. And that's kind of what I like. I like that release. One show that's... Because Arrow's so grounded on the streets. Yes. And I love having one where it's just like, and here's the craziness that you're not going to see in any of the other shows. Like, that to me is, is a lot of fun. Exactly. We have Betty Buckley cast in Supergirl as Patricia Arias. Do you, uh, what do you know about this character? Uh, I don't know much about the character. I know about the actress. She's she's big on Broadway. She's like a Tony Award winning actress. And I don't know if they're already setting up for another musical episode by already popping her in there. I hope so. I'd be happy with that. Uh, uh, I think they said they were not doing one this year at uh, least, but maybe. <laughs> All right, so she's going to be coming up. That's exciting. Uh, we have uh, Lin- Earth X. Uh, what, what about Earth X? Is now what uh, he has up there right now, or is that we're not talking about? Oh that. well, Lindsay Gort cast in Titans mm. as Detective Amy Rohrbeck. So more Titans casting. Um, from what I'm hearing, this show is going to be very different in tone than the CW shows, uh, and it is also in a totally different universe. And of course, this is going to be on the WBDC streaming platform. Yeah, that's that leads me a little to be a little worried. I don't know how that's going to be as far as. Well, how big of a budget are you going to have for just a streaming platform that isn't Netflix? I mean, it's not CBS, but CBS spent a lot of money on that Star Trek show. I watched that, and it mm-hmm. looks good. Um, whether you like it or not, whether you're a Star Trek fan or not, I kind of like it, but the effects are good. They do a smart thing where they keep things really dark on the show. Okay. So that helps. It's like the Angel Buffy. Kind of helps hide of, the effects yeah. a little bit. Um, I also like the character arc so far in the Star Trek show again I'm not a huge Trek guy so I like it I know a lot of people don't Um, I think there's going to be enough other content to really bolster this you also have um, uh, uh, the Young Justice season 3 that's coming out on this Mm -hmm. platform and then maybe other stuff too so I'm just a little worried about the show not because of this actress I don't know much about her so I can't judge but I know Brenton Thwaites is going to be in it and everything I've seen him in is he has super underwhelmed me because he's he's in Gods of Egypt. Okay. He's in the new Pirates film, and he's just not good. I mean, hey, maybe movies aren't his thing, and maybe TV is where he's gonna shine. I don't mm. know. But I'm if especially if it seems like he's gonna be like a lead, um, I'm not super stoked on that. Is what I'll say. Um, Andrew Kreisberg talks about which Harrison Wells you're gonna see on the Flash this year, and it's gonna be Harry the Bebop author sci-fi guy that's not a real scientist but he's like the spiritual backbone of everybody at star labs um i guess rather than introducing yet another one that was kind of becoming a gag you're Mm. gonna get the same one the same harry i thought harry was the the more serious one see yeah hr is the the goofy guy hr okay so which one so which one is harry harry's the he's the one who's super serious he's from the next earth with um and he's got his daughter? Yes. Is he the one who's got yes. his daughter? even so though she's going to stay in her Earth, I think, and he's going to stay here. I don't know why. And was HR out of there at the end of the season last year? Uh, there. If you haven't seen last season, he, he goes away in a pretty pivotal moment. He does go away. Remind me what happened. Spoilers. I saw it. I'm okay. totally... uh, he uses the... Uh, the machine to change his appearance to look like Iris, and then he gets killed. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. He takes the bullet. He's the sacrifice. Oh, okay. He's the sacrifice. See, that's why Roxy Stryer does TV time, kids. <laughs> I did not look at these things. I'm doing this on the fly. Thank yeah. God Paul Ponte is here. It, it was a good ending to a character that was kind of silly. He had a nice emotional ending there. So yeah, yeah, and it was. I, I did like that kind of gimmick, though. Um, did you see Gotham this week? I did not. I, okay. I, I jumped off the Gotham train a little early, unfortunately. That's okay. Listen, I, I, have, I can't blame anybody that jumps off the train of any TV shows because there's so much to talk about. How was it? 
it's okay sometimes and other times not. Like I, for me, it, it's just not. The reality is, is, it's like sometimes it's so dark and sometimes it's so silly and sometimes it's so broad that I mean sometimes it's good. Now they got they they got Bruce in a costume that's sort of like. Does it look better it. than it does in the promo images? Because it looks bad in the promo. It images. looks kind of like he's like a, um, a goth skier. Uh, there's also a new one that they just introduced in the last episode. So I don't know. I'm really hot and cold with Gotham. Uh, I still watch it, but I'm up and down. I don't know. Chat roll. What do you guys think um, about the young Dark Knight, the young Gotham, the Smallville that takes place in Gotham? Um, well, I think that's all the time we have this week to talk about DC movie news. We're being told to get the heck out of here. Uh, Paul Ponte, blow yourself up. Tell people where to find you. Uh, you can find me at thescreenwatchersguild.com for my movie podcast. Uh, we're going to be reviewing, of course, all the comic movies coming out as well as regular movies. Um, at the Paul Ponte on Twitter. And, yeah. And I'm also at LA Podcast Festival this weekend in LA. There are single day tickets available. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be at the Biltmore Hotel. If oh. you come, you can be on my podcast because I'll be there recording all weekend. So Really? Where is this now? At the Biltmore Hotel in Los Angeles. Nice. Uh, LA Podcast Festival. Uh, it's a great, awesome event with a lot of good podcasts there doing shows and everything. Um, yeah, it's going to be awesome. Come check it out. Excellent. Oh, also, somebody, Ivan Soda brought up a good point. Jill Scott was cast in Black Lightning as Lady Eve. That's big casting. That's pretty cool. I did see that. Um, also, I wanted to talk about the new Rocksteady game that could be coming out. Hopefully, we'll get some information about that, about where they're going potentially in the DC universe. Um, make sure you follow uh, at Jay Quasto, who's not here, Johnny LaQuasto. His CD's great, by the way. His CD is great. You should definitely check it out, people. Um, keep him up there on the list. At Mike Kalinowski, of course, the killer. Follow him in the Schmodown. See all the stuff that he's doing. I know he's got. He's in the singles tournament right now. My partner uh, in crime. Um, yeah, I'm Adam Gertler. Uh, I'll see you next time. Check out uh, Film Therapy. Uh, I did that uh, with Brianne Chandler. I did that just today. Um, talk to me at Adam Gertler. And uh, next week we're gonna have some a new trailer to talk about, guys. It's really happening. Uh, and see Blade Runner 2049 because people who I really respect are losing their minds over this movie. Nice. So uh, I'll see you next time. From producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of its owners or principals.